Hi, folks, and thank you for joining our webinar on demand about helping staff and customers migrate to digital banking. Um, my name is John Finlay. I'm the CEO of Lemonade LXP. Um, we're a learning experience and digital adoption platform that's built specifically to help financial institutions with the human side of digital transformation. So driving digital fluency amongst frontline staff and helping customers and or members uh, migrate to digital channels. And so the goal today in this webinar is just to share some of the deep set of best practices and the insights that we've gleaned over from over our years in helping financial institutions um, drive digital adoption and fluency. So let's get started. First, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the trends. So looking uh, um, um, at some of the usage patterns through the pandemic, we see that about 50% of customers um, started using or increased their usage of um, mobile banking through the pandemic. And it makes sense as branch, branch um, services were reduced and people wanted to stay safe. Of course, they migrated to digital platforms to do their banking. And that aligns with what we hear from our clients. Um, they saw a pretty heavy influx of folks using their digital banking channels. Um, and as we emerge from the pandemic, what we see is about 60% of customers plan to continue using digital channels uh, post pandemic. And that makes sense because they've gotten used to them. They know how to use um, the digital products. Uh, they become comfortable and feel secure in doing so. So of course, uh, those new habits are gonna, per are gonna persist post pandemic. In terms of priorities, this I thought was interesting, you know, priorities for banks and credit unions, digital transformation, 75% of banks say it's a top priority, um, and 51% say improving the customer experience. And to me, those are intrinsically linked. Um, having a great customer experience um, is, is going to be, as more people move, move to digital banking, that digital bank, digital transformation and how well you do it is gonna impact your customer experience. So to me, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, also uh, noting that customer engagement is seen as key. Bankers believe that digital transformation to improve the customer experience will be significantly important. That's 88% of bankers said that, but only 35% felt they were good at um, customer experience and engagement. So there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and that's what we hear from our clients. And one of the big reasons that um, they choose Lemonade is to, to help them do those things. So some of the hurdles to digital transformation, I found this one interesting. So you see number one is cultural issues. 62% of folks said cultural issues is the biggest hurdle. And then of course there's, you know, archaic IT systems and applications, which makes sense. Um, but down there, lack of digital skills, 43% and the lack of clear uh, leadership vision. Interesting that those are there. I kind of feel like this has flipped on its head a little bit. I would invert this, although I'm, I'm sure the, the results would be the same, but to me, it flows from the top. If you're trying to drive digital transformation, the first thing is that leadership has to signal to their entire organization that they are vested in this digital transformation, that it's a priority, and that they're going to do everything possible to make it successful. And the first piece of that is, is training folks and upskilling your frontline staff so that they have the digital skills required to both promote and support your technology. And if you give your staff the digital skills they need, you will create a culture of innovation um, and of digital. And I think that that is the crucial element. It's gotta come from the top, you gotta to train your people and in doing so uh, you convert your culture. So um, this, line from this Cap Gemini report, this paragraph I thought was pretty prescient. It says, uh, the lack of digital skills is one of the top hurdles to culture transformation. Front runners prioritize building the digital skills of their employees. 73% of front runners make investments in new digital skills compared to just 11% of the slow movers. So as a result, employees feel more engaged in the transformation process because their skills are aligned with the new digital ways of working. To me, that captures it. Um, in order to drive a great customer experience, we first have to think about the employee experience and making sure that they're engaged in the transformation and that you're not just hanging them out to dry to support digital products that they don't understand all that well. So the kind of essential digital transformation components, um, I thought this was a pretty good graph. Reskilling workforce, obviously crucial. Upgrading systems and processes, of course, as you digitize and modernize. Leveraging modern technologies, uh, a big one in my opinion. Fostering innovation, that's part of the culture conversation. 
And then of course, enhancing consumer or customer experiences and becoming a data analytics leader. So what we're gonna talk about today where we have particular expertise is in reskilling workforce, updating your processes, leveraging modern technology and enhancing that customer experience. That's kind of what, where our sweet spot is. So that's what I'm gonna elaborate on. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the employee experience. Um, to me, this is a crucial element. You think of employees who are asked to promote and support your technology. Um, if you don't give them the foundational knowledge that they need, uh, it's a pretty tall order to ask them to tackle that. So let's dig into that. When we talk to our financial institution clients, what we find is they face a digital dilemma. And that is that at many FIs, employees don't actually have to bank with their employer. So if you don't bank with your employer, of course, you're not going to use the tech. So if you don't use the digital banking tech, you don't have the experience with it, and then you don't have great training on it, um, then it's going to be very difficult to promote and support it. Um, and so, you know, the banks need to and credit unions need to roll out training. The problem is um, training has a little bit of a bad name in the FI space, largely because systems are record um, you know, the legacy LMSs are not popular with staff, largely because most of them deliver client compliance training. So you've got to overcome that aversion to training. And then you've got antiquated learning systems that lack the modern tooling for teaching digital. So um, you've got staff who don't want to take training and tools that aren't, that aren't geared towards digital training. And compounded that problem is the fact that your tech changes quickly. So you've got to be able to roll this training out very quickly and change it quickly. And traditional learning systems and authoring tools are not great for authoring digital training, let alone for updating it uh, when your tech changes. So that's the digital dilemma. So the challenge for um, financial institutions is to turn that frontline staff into digital ambassadors. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the recipe that we created for doing that um, and explain a little bit about why it works um, and how you might be able to leverage a similar, similar recipe. So the Lemonade learning experience is built in the image of today's most addictive mobile and social games. Um, and we did that um, because of that aversion to training and the uh, disdain for the, the, the systems of record. Um, that employees have. So by morphing the learning experience into a game, we address the key challenges. First one is awareness. Um, and second is participation. You know, you're trying to get people to participate. If you send out a link to your old LMS, people are, unless it's mandatory, people aren't going to do it. But if you morph it into a game and make it fun, you'll find that uh, you increase participation significantly. We get participation rates, voluntary participation rates, as high as 84%. It's a pretty nice thing for training, training uh, departments to have. Um, the next thing is that the, the game keeps people coming back daily to take training. That drives the distributed practice and the repetition that makes training stick. So this central narrative game, it isn't the training component. It's just the lure to keep people coming back regularly. So the next piece of the recipe. So when you're trying to train people on your digital products, they first need to have an understanding of foundational knowledge, the rules and regulations, the daily limits, that type of stuff. Typically it's distributed as a PDF um, and people read it and tick a box to say they read it. It's not the best learning experience and I don't think it's great for retention. So what we've done is uh, we typically will morph that into a game-based learning module that um, develops that, that foundational knowledge. It's inherently bite-sized, so a couple minutes to play. And when you make mistakes, it lets you know you made them and gives you opportunities to correct them. And it drives that repetition that drives retention. So using game-based learning, we can get those foundational things into employees' knowledge sets so that they can help customers when they're trying to understand what their daily limit is or what the limits are in using the technology. The next piece is we got to teach frontline staff how to use the tech. And that Lemonade has authoring tools that allow you to very quickly author walkthroughs and simulators of your technology. A walkthrough is just a specific transaction um, and a simulator is simulating the entire tech so you can click wherever you want or tap wherever you want if it's mobile. Um, when you author them, it creates two versions. One that's a guided 
tour and the other that's a challenge based game and basically you have five lives to try to complete a mobile remote check deposit or do a bill pay or whatever so it turns into a game makes it fun and it embraces mistakes so that people actually learn through playing and we found that people really enjoy that experience and they play over and over that drives the repetition that gets them to really understand that tech it also provides a risk-free environment so they don't have to worry about making a mistake these things can also be accessed as within the flow of work to help um, support cust- uh, frontline staff when they need to support customers. And basically what they do is make your frontline tech savvy or digitally fluent to drive a positive customer experience. So game-based learning for foundational knowledge, technology walkthroughs and simulators to actually become digitally fluent. The next piece is we got to be able to promote and support them to customers. So Lemonade has the ability to very quickly author role play scenarios. So they're kind of like virtual role plays where customers come into the branch or call the contact center and you got to help them. Unlike live role plays that can feel kind of hokey, these these, uh, role play scenarios are kind of fun. And the goal is to guide the customer towards an elegant product recommendation without being overly salesy. And it kind of gives you a rating. It's great because next gen learners, younger staff, they don't really enjoy um, live role play. They prefer virtual, they're used to a gaming environment. So it makes it kind of fun. It also means that mistakes are cheap. If you make a mistake, it's not embarrassing. It's not a big deal. And we give you a feedback loop that allows you to learn from it. And ultimately what it does is it makes, it gives the frontline staff the soft skills they need to nail that customer experience as they have questions or opportunities to promote uh, digital banking. Just a couple more things about our recipe. We've also built in a content exchange um, that provides a repository of ready-made content that you can download into your Lemonade instance and you can edit it if you want to or use it as is. Um, We're regularly adding to this. So it's not just digital um, because we realize that Lemonade can be used in a lot of different ways. Our clients are constantly MacGyvering it in ways we didn't imagine. Um, But this allows you to get to market very quickly or stand your instance up very quickly. And our clients love this. And we've got um, not just uh, content, but we've also got curriculum that that we've developed. So if you download uh, individual training modules, this curricula basically explains how to um, uh, assemble all of that content into courses and ultimately into a curriculum for Um, in this case, digital banking. So it's really ready-made, easy to stand up, um, ready to go. And the reason that I talk about this is one of the keys is being able to react quickly as your technology changes and to get training out fast to support that frontline staff. And that's really about being nimble as as an organization. And I think um, that's why we built in this stuff into Lemonade. The last piece about being nimble is our rapid authoring tools. They help you address a fast changing business environment, reduce production costs, uh, and easily update your courseware when things change as they do a lot in the digital space. So that's kind of the recipe for the um, upskilling your employees and creating a great employee experience through your digital transformation. The next piece is the customer experience. And this one um, is, you know, it's a crucial element and it's driven by um, digitally fluent, confident frontline employees. Um, and the re- so to talk a little bit about the recipe for nailing that migration experience, the first thing you got to understand is that new tech is intimidating for people. I don't know if you've ever been um, tech support for your folks, but you know they're often intimidated by technology. They find it frustrating. The entire support experience can be a frustrating one. And if your staff aren't trained on your digital products, then it really creates a tricky situation for them. Um, And what we found is um, through the pandemic, we, as people migrated to digital, um, contact center reps um, were having trouble fielding all the calls. So you had long contact center wait times um, and very few FIs had the right digital support tools. So it created a little bit of a mess for folks. So I think nailing that digital Um, migration experience requires um, uh, support. And so I did a little digging to see what other financial institutions are doing. And I didn't want to bash anybody. So I've I've, uh, redacted the names of the financial institutions. But here's one that's promoting the Zelle technology. And it was a web page on their website. It was hard to find. 
uh, and it's static and it's got no screenshots. So it's very difficult from a user perspective to, to, to actually use this to guide you through a transaction. But I think more importantly, having it hidden on the website is difficult to find. And then having this type of experience sends a message about how important digital is to this financial institution. If this is the level of effort they're gonna to go to to support their digital products, uh, it would seem that digital isn't that much of a priority for them. And I don't think that's the message that financial institutions wanna be sending in light of the fact that customers have migrated to digital and plan to continue using it. And of course, will grow their usage of it. So this was one example I thought that um, sort of highlights some a way of doing that isn't great. The next one here is this is like an online manual. Um, you know, you can flip the pages and so forth. It's about 120 pages in this, and it's got the screenshots and step-by-step -step instructions, but it's a manual. And I know I'm dating myself here, but um, back in the 80s when the VCR came out, uh, I remember we got one, and my reward for for going through the manual would have been to watch a movie, but still, I didn't go through the manual. I just went and tried to figure it out, which was frustrating, by the way. So I don't think this is a modern experience. And I don't think, again, I think it sends the wrong message about how serious the financial institution is about their digital. The next one is videos. And videos are great, um, but I think they're, most of them I see are really marketing videos that are telling you about the convenience and why you should convert to digital banking. Um, once you get into actually showing people how to use the tech, it gets a bit trickier because when your tech changes, it's very difficult to change videos. It's expensive and it takes time. So it's very hard to be nimble and support your frontline staff on the day that your technology launched. So um, we don't see videos as the best solution. We see them more as a marketing play than as a digital onboarding and digital support tool. So what we built to address this is a digital adoption platform that is essentially a repository of walkthroughs and simulators. It's branded, it's searchable, it's WCAG compliant. And essentially what it does is it improves the employee experience so that they can improve the customer experience. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about why that's important. So first thing about these walkthroughs is that they drive organizational alignment on digital. So no matter who at your organization wants to understand your tech, they're gonna get the same story every time. And that united front is what you wanna to present to your customers to nail that experience. The next thing is they provide a risk-free environment for um, both staff and customers to test drive the tech. I mean, and think of it from a new customer's perspective who's planning to, uh, who's thinking about having a long-term relationship with a financial institution, big part of what they're getting into bed with is the technology. So they obviously would like to test drive it and the videos and the static forms don't allow them to do so. So I think walkthroughs and simulators really shine in that area. They also show the ease of convenience because you're, you're actually trying it. Um, and it's that ease and convenience that will drive adoption. Ultimately, our clients have, as uh, again, MacGyvered them in ways that uh, we hadn't thought of. So they've become sort of a handy six in one tool. And I'll dig into that in a sec. But first, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is TD Bank's version of their Digital Academy. Um, and so anybody can come and, and, and select a walkthrough that they wanna, they wanna check out. So how to log into the TD Bank app. So here I've, uh, I've launched the simulator or the walkthrough, I should say, and it tells me where to click. And it just explains to me how to use it. So if I'm a little nervous trying to figure out how to log in for the first time, I can go and use this. And when I'm done, it actually gives me the option to play again. It recommends um, the tech. Uh, so it tells me where I can click to download the app. And then it also recommends other similar um, transactions that people viewed when they viewed how to log into online banking. So super helpful way um, to support both customers um, and staff. And as I mentioned, it's branded, it's searchable, um, and you can um, go in and even search for specific things. Let's say I wanted to find mobile, or let's say I was looking for bill pay. Uh, it'll find all the bill pay examples. And let's say I want to see how to enroll in bill pay. Um, as a customer, I can go in um, and check out how to enroll. And if I'm on the contact center side and the customer is having trouble, I can say, oh, what screen are you having trouble with? Open up the window and say, oh, you're having trouble with um, verifying it's you. So I'll select that screen, go right to that screen and help you through the transaction. So that's kind of what um, the digital adoption platform looks like. 
it's all authored in our tool. Um, something like this can be authored very quickly. It can also host videos and so forth. I'm going to go back to the presentation now for to keep going. So that's why walkthroughs and simulators are valuable. Um, I want to tell you the six ways that it's used. First is branch staff. Some of our clients have concierge service. So when folks come into branch, they're standing in line. Someone will come up to them and say, hey, what are you here to do today? Oh, I'm here to deposit some checks. Let me show you how easy that would have been. And they whip out an iPad and walk them through the, the transaction. And because um, these, digital, these digital folks are these digital laggards, they're the folks that are in your branches. Um, and of course, your staff won't recommend products they don't know. And they will also won't rec recommend products they can't support because imagine if somebody asked them a question. So this basically provides a sort of security blanket that allows your frontline staff to promote and support the tech in branch. Also contact centers, you got to think of it from their perspective through the pandemic. Many of them are started working from home. So they didn't have the colleague to colleague or the shoulder to shoulder colleague support that they had been accustomed to at the office. They also didn't have support tools um, to nail their customer experience. Um, and so our FIs are using the Digital Academy to um, pull up walkthroughs, email them to folks, uh, walk them through online uh, or, or on the call. And that reduces talk times, de-stresses the situation and improves the customer experience. The next way some of our clients are using it is in their automated virtual assistant where um, folks are on hold and um, they ask a couple of questions. And if their challenge can be solved with a walkthrough, it gives them the link and they can go and, and uh, resolve their issue faster without actually going through to the contact center. And in some cases, this is driving, you know, hundreds of, of visits a day to the digital academy, which is um, taking weight off the contact center. And at like eight, 10 bucks a call, uh, that's a huge savings each day for the financial institution. They're also linked off the website. Uh, in a lot of cases, next gens, uh, the younger generations prefer to self-help. They don't want to talk to people um, and they don't like contact center wait times and they expect info at their fingertips. So the Digital Academy linked off the website in an accessible, obvious spot allows them to go online, solve their problem without having, actually having to talk to someone. Then there's chatbots. So um, a customer goes online and the first thing they go to is the chatbot. They ask a question. And if we can solve it with a, with a walkthrough simulator, it just gives them a link and sends them directly to that. So you can improve um, that customer experience by resolving the, the support ticket faster. Marketing, um, as I mentioned, new, new prospects are evaluating not just your financial institution, but your tech. And so this allows them um, to test drive it because most campaigns stop at awareness. It's like, oh, here's our tech. It's great. It's easy. It's convenient. Tells them all the value propositions. But walkthroughs let people experience the tech. And I think that's a huge advantage. Um, and it gives a risk-free sort of trial to reduce tech anxiety and builds the comfort and familiarity required for them to adopt. So when you're courting a prospect, showing that the bank is really supporting its digital products and that digital is really important to the bank, um, sends a message to that customer um, that they're getting into a relationship with a financial institution who is going in the direction that the world is going. And that speaks to the new customer acquisition. Uh, I mentioned choosing an FI is choosing a FinTech. Um, people wanna try before they buy. So um, those are kind of the ways the last, um, the last way that it's used is frontline staff training and nested into the lemonade learning experience, as I showed you, uh, sort of step two in the recipe, uh, walkthroughs as training modules less nested into learning paths that help drive digital fluency so that your frontline staff has the confidence they need. So that's basically the lemonade recipe. I can tell you that um, it's been driving great results for our customers. And I think this recipe can be repeated uh, not just with Lemonade, with other tech, uh, you might have to cobble a few things together to do it without Lemonade, but it's doable. And I think this recipe is driving, I know it's driving great results for our clients. So hopefully you gain some insights on that. I'll leave you with this equation. Our, our digital migration formula is that a good employee experience plus a good digital experience and the digital onboarding equals a great customer experience. And so I think that's the equation that we really try to focus on with each execution when Lemonade's being used for that digital adoption, digital fluency and transformation use case.
that encompasses everything that I had to say today. Um, and so uh, thank you very much and I'll open it up for questions. Okay, great. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or the Q&A. We've got a couple in here already. Um, First question comes from Emma, and the question is, uh, how long does it take to launch one of these? Great question. So uh, the Lemonade, the learning experience platform, the process is you give us a URL and we'll have you up the next day. And because there's a repository of online courseware, you can be live you know, in a couple of days, but often clients want to author content into it. So it takes uh, a little bit longer. So some implementations will be a couple of weeks, others might be as much as a month or two. Okay, uh, this next question comes from Noah. And the question is, if you update your tech, do you have to remake your walkthroughs from scratch? No, 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 no. So basically when you've got a walkthrough, you can go into the authoring tool, select that, auth uh, that, that walkthrough and click edit. And then you can replace any screens and any guiding text and just resave it. So it's super fast to change because we recognize that technology changes quickly. And our goal was, to create a platform that was nimble enough to make sure that you can roll out support and training on the day that you you launch the new changes to your tech. Okay, this uh, great question from uh, Evan in the chat. The question is, uh, and I'm sure John, you you kind of already touched on this, but it might be worth going into it in a little more detail. Um, the, the question is, have you used this for customer facing versus employee education and, and kind of what yeah. that distinction is? So Lemonade is the employee facing training and we haven't used it yet for customer training, but we have used it for extended enterprise. We have a large, uh, one of the large credit card companies is using it to train frontline staff at their retail partner so that they can promote and support the new credit card. So um, we do see it for extended enterprise, but we haven't used it for customer facing. And the reason is it requires authentication. So you actually have to log in and that creates some, uh, some issues on, on in terms of customer education where you don't necessarily want them to have to log in. But on the digital adoption side, uh, that platform can be customer facing and there's also a version that's employee facing um, and you can put videos on there and so forth. So there is uh, the, the ability to engage and educate uh, customers or members uh, using the digital adoption platform. So in short, Lemonade, the learning experience platform for internal staff, digital adoption platform uh, is for staff and for customers or members. Uh, a little bit of a follow-up question from Evan, they say that they're interested in uh, gamification of training for customers. So it might be uh, worth talking about our challenge-based walkthroughs maybe. Yeah, so we, um, Lemonade is actually a spinoff of another company that I co-founded in 1999 called Launchfire and it builds game-based digital promotions company, digital promotions, I should say. Uh, we work a lot with large food and bev marketers and retailers and restaurant marketers. And our programs are always designed to educate consumers, get them to buy more stuff. So we have a suite of tools that are designed for customer education. It's just, it's, it's, they, they reside with our sister company, LaunchFire. Okay, uh, question here from Hannah. Uh, they're asking about pricing uh, for Lemonade. Yeah, so, Lemonade, uh, it, the, the learning experience platform, we have some customers who buy the learning experience platform, others who buy just the digital adoption platform. Learning experience platform is a seat-based cost. Um, and so it really depends on the size of your financial institution. The digital adoption platform is based on the asset size of the financial institution because we wanted to make it available to institutions of all sizes. So if you want more detailed pricing, just hit me up. Uh, with an email um, and let me know sort of size of your institution, number of employees, and I can give you pretty accurate pricing. Hannah also just asked what the name of our customer facing training product was. Uh, it doesn't have a name. Uh, Launchfire is the name of the company and it's got a pretty deep set of um, digital promotion engines that we can use. They don't specifically have names, but we have a bunch of products that are designed for customer education, um, and customer motivation. Uh, and another question here from CJ. Question is, uh, can you customize your ready-made courses? 
Yep, you can download them from the content exchange and then make any edits to them that you want, or you can use them ready-made. This question comes from Penelope, uh, and the question is, what size of financial institutions have you worked with? All sizes. We've worked in, with ones that are a trillion dollars in, in assets all the way down to you know, 100, 100, 150 million. So um, yeah, we've really, we've really run the gamut with that. Okay, this might be the last question unless I, I see any more come in. Uh, this question is from Deb and they're wondering um, if the client needs to author content themselves. We have an authoring team. Uh, Carly actually um, pinch hits. She's uh, she she's got dual role here at the company. She's marketing coordinator, but also is a, a big part of the content team that authors uh, our ready-made courseware for the content exchange. And so we also do custom content authoring for our customers. A lot of our customers author it themselves because the authoring tools are really dead simple. Like literally, you can learn to use them in a couple hours. Um, so many of our of our customers author their own, but those who don't want to, we've got a team that can tackle that for you. Okay, I think that was the last question. So uh, John, I can turn it back to you to sign off. Okay, great, thanks Carly. Um, listen gang, thanks very much for joining, really appreciate it. I hope that um, the best practices and insights that I shared um, are of some value to you. And of course, if there's any way we can help you, my contact information is on the screen. Please feel free to shoot me an email and I'll happy to point you in the right direction. Thank you very much and have a great day.